touched the walls of a city streets and didn't explain. Sadly, so does our ways. I've never asked him why. Cast down, it was heaven sent, and to the church, no intent to repent on my knees. Just to cry. Removing the battery pack and the compartment door is simple enough. Here we are going to remove the control center cover. This is what surrounds the keyboard on the top. What I did here was use a precision screwdriver and uh, pop out the top corners of it, uh, going through the holes of where you remove the screws. And uh, this leaves the corners on the top popped out to where you can start um, prying it loose. Just be careful, take your time. Uh, it comes out relatively easy. You see the corners there are popped up a little bit. And that's how I'll start grabbing them. And once you get it off, you have a connector. Uh, take a look at this connector. It's going to be a lot of them like it. About a half a millimeter from the top is where it separates from the plug. So I use a flathead precision, precision screwdriver and um, pry up at each side. Pop it out. Uh, one thing I noticed when I got to removing the keyboard screws is they are severely torqued in there. And I even started, uh, started to strip with the Phillips, so I said, screw that. And I, this is how I uh, get those screws done. I push down really hard with the thumb and just get them loosened to the point where you can get all five of them done. And then you just pull them out of the tabs, flip it over carefully. you got two ribbon cables. And the ribbon cables have uh, latch releases, so take a good look at those, pop the latch, pull the ribbons out, piece of cake. Now we're just removing the um, power button board, another one of those connectors where I might use a flathead screwdriver on both sides to pull it up. There you go. Take out a couple screws, that thing comes off. 
keep good track of your screws of course Here I have the same uh, issue with the six screen screws. They're really in tight. So once again, push down really hard and use the pliers just to get them a couple turns loose and they'll come off real easy. It's a lot better than stripping your screws. And you got two plugs here. Uh, they pop right off and then you got to pull the wires out of the the slots there really delicate wires I was trying to pull it out here but yeah it was getting kind of tough so I grabbed my little self little tool over there and helped pull it out don't want to grab anything sharp because you don't want to cut into those wires and you have one more plug over there to pull out of this cable routing I'm very impressed with the cable routing of uh, of this laptop. It's uh, everything's got its place and everything belongs in its place. Very well done. And see how I'm trying to get the top edge of that connector, and that sticker is actually in my view, so I take that out. And eventually I'll get it. Probably should have gone up to the other side, but there it came. Pull out of its routing. And I'm a little anal. I put the sticker back in place because I like it where it's supposed to be. And just make sure the wires are clear of all the routing because when you pull the screen up, you don't want anything snagging. Now we're going to grab the Wi Fi card. There's one screw that holds it in the top. I got the uh, Centrino 2230. Your card may vary. And it just pulls out of the slot once you got that screw off. And then you got that little gray wire. It's not connected to anything. Just uh, pull it out. And then those wires go through a nice little routing. Like I said, I'm very well impressed with how everything goes together on here. Leave one of those screws in the screen there, of course, or else it would fall out. Now I remove my cover. You could uh, take that screen down a lot farther than I did, but that's why I use the cover. And I'll take out my last screw there. Sometimes a magnetic screwdriver fails. And she slides right out. And now we're going up to the status light board. This is the connector. These are those uh, three LEDs you have on the upper left. Same type of connector, half a millimeter down, just trying to get it out, pull the cable out of its routing. Don't get too brutish on it. If it's not coming easy for you, figure out a different way because these are some awful thin wires. You don't want to stress them. A couple screws on that status board and that pops out just like the power button board. Next we'll do the palm rest assembly and uh, you got uh, I think about five screws to remove on the bottom first from underneath. And then the palm rest assembly comes off relatively easy. I start in the top corners there. Just get that to pop. And uh, 
main thing is just got to be careful. Take your time. Don't get too bendy and crazy with it. When I got all the way to the end here on the front where the speakers are, it's best to um, pull it straight up instead of bending it forward. And I'll use a screwdriver here occasionally to help break the pops. Just taking my time, don't want to hear any cracks or anything. Careful when you're sticking your screwdriver if you do what I do there. At this point it comes more straight up than pulling forward. And this left lower corner is the last one to go. And that's why here I start tackling it from the front lip and pulls it right up. Bam. And of course it relatched in the back, but hey. You do have other connectors on that palm wrist, uh, so follow your instructions and make sure you're moving those connectors. Here I'm uh, removing the speaker that kind of locks down the optical drive. Instructions got you removing both, but of course you don't need to remove both. Just swing the one out of the way. And make sure you're not uh, touching the actual speakers because they're kind of delicate. If you were to put your thumb on the actual speaker and pick it up, you might end up damaging your speakers. And just pull it out, swing it over. Okay, all that work we finally got to the optical drive. And that's a little latch release. Uh, same kind of ribbon latch release as your keyboard. And you got a couple screws there. And you'll pop your slot drive out real easy. Slot drive has got a bracket around, so you have to replace that bracket onto your new slot drive. Very impressed with the instructional steps of the manual. Uh, they teach you very well how to disassemble this and even uh, show you reassembly steps. So, well done on Alienware. They want you to... Uh, Go ahead and work on it yourself if that's what you want to do. They want you to have good information for it. You'll have to uh, come almost this far. You won't need to remove the speaker, of course, but you'll have to remove the uh, armrest to get to your inside two slots of MIM. And they slide in at a 45 degree angle and uh, pop down. Now, when I first put this in, I didn't like how it popped on the right side. It didn't, it wasn't quite in. So here I'm thinking about that. I'm like, nah, unpop it. Push it a little bit more. And when you push that down to uh, clip into the spring clips, it should go real easy. I mean, there shouldn't be any, any real force whatsoever. And then the same with the top one. Uh, here I just wanted to make sure that I uh, put it all back together. I wanted to make sure my keyboard worked and I didn't foobar something. So I'm just uh, throwing the back cover on, the battery on, and going to fire it up. See if the uh, 16 gigabytes is showing because it still has the original OEM to uh, 8 gigabytes in the front. So I added 8 gigabytes to the back slots, changed out the optical. And, uh, of course, you know, removed all that keyboard and stuff, so I want to make sure I didn't screw something up. So I'm just going to fire it up on a battery and test it out.
uh, always a good sign when you're in your laptop and you come back out things light up now this is still running off the original uh, OEM spinner drive that I had it ordered with because I was going to put my own SSD in there and there we go found new hardware now I'm just going to open up notepad and test out the keyboard obviously touchpads working fine always a good sign so it appears I didn't screw up the keyboard and keyboard ribbon is installed fine that panel is installed fine everything works so now I'm going to pull out the original OEM spinner drive that was in the primary slot and I actually leave that out I'm going to put in the 8 gigabytes of vengeance and the uh, bottom slot so now I have 16 gigabytes of vengeance 1600 and once again when they when you slap them down to clip it in it should go real easy All right, break open my Plexter SSD got a pretty good deal on this 200 bucks after uh, after rebate. Reviews well. Plexter makes some good optical drives. And you have this little uh, jumper type thing you got to put in there. And then slap that in the bracket. Now when I put the SSD in I leave the optical out because it already has the has the original OS on there and I one time a long time ago I went ahead and put both of them in there and I wound up with a dual boot system so now just to avoid that kind of crap I don't uh, I only have the SSD in there when I go to install Windows and actually I formatted the uh, old Windows installation on the old drive using the USB external uh, device just to avoid any possibility of the computer seeing two windows and wanting to set up a dual boot system so here we are in the BIOS, getting ready for the uh, Windows installation. Uh, Alienware sent it to me in RAID configuration. I'm going with H HCI. We'll see how that uh, should work just fine. And then here, make sure your optical drive is going to be your uh, boot drive, so you can load Windows real easy. And then toss in your Alienware uh, Windows 7 Service Pack 1 DVD and follow the instructions. Peace cake. And then when I uh, went to put the OEM drive back in the primary slot, you have to go back into BIOS and make sure your secondary slot is the one that's uh, being booted from. And it's just that easy. And you can see in the, earlier in the video how my performance was. See ya.